or challenging. There we go. Sorry, um, whether it's been an easy journey or not, she has still continued. So really incredible um, to have her here today. And I would like everybody to give her a warm welcome and maybe we can do the reactions and the icons and send her lots of love. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, so cool. So follow your joy. Did that card just like jump out and connect to you, Charlotte, as an intro to you? <laughs> Yeah, totally. That just is totally my kind of card. <laughs> um, awesome. And yeah, thanks, Tammy, for having me on your in in your group for today. I'm uh, honoured to be here sharing the space with you. Well, we're blessed <laughs> to have you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks. And if you can do it, your introduction of who you are, a little bit about mm. that, and then Charlotte has, she's used to doing this and working in groups, so she'll kind of guide you through. And one of the fun things I'm excited she's going to be taking us through is mind mapping. So she's going to take us in an exercise where we can take all the stories that we've been learning about and do an incredible mind mapping on how we can connect the dots and bring it all into form and shape. So thank you, Charlotte, and welcome to our masterclass, kindergarten masterclass. Cool, thanks. So yeah, I'm uh, live from my studio here. It's um, it's a kind of a new space for me actually. So I'll give you a little whirl. Mm -hmm. There isn't much new stuff happening, but um, there's a few pieces of artwork on the walls, as you can see. And uh, I've got myself a little paper here for later that we're going to be collaborating on um, and to do our mind map all together. But um, yeah, as Tammy says, I'll just do a quick intro on uh, a bit about my background. And can you guys hear me? There's this uh, central heating fan going on just above me. It's okay. Oh yeah, we hear you perfectly. And I just want to <laughs> say she really is like a superhero to me. She's She's got the mind, the body, and the heart of a superhero. So I'm really excited to have her <laughs> as a superhero. <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, I came from uh, my upbringing in the UK and uh, where I grew up in one of the biggest towns in the world, London, um, where I had my formal training. And I always knew as a little kid that I was going to leave England. And that day came when I was 33 and I left the UK for Canada. And um, I settled in Montreal for 16 years, uh, had a, many contracts in Toronto and lived in Vancouver as well for a while. And um, my, my day job, if you like, um, has been for the past 20 or so years working in the entertainment business um, in various capacities as a sculptor, a scenic artist, and a special effects makeup artist doing creature effects. Um, so yeah, some of the projects I've worked on uh, uh, Harry Potter and, and the Father of the Stone. Um, I've been, I worked with Jim Henson's Creature Shop for a while, um, who just did Pinocchio. Um, and <laughs> I'm currently working on Fargo on season five, uh, TV series and last year I was doing, doing um, the, the Last of Us so most of my work with the entertainment business is big blockbuster features and TV shows and um, I have parallel to that my own practice as a fine artist in my own right um, so I do commissions and uh, I also have been working on uh, for the longest time since 2012 actually uh, on a project that I've called You and it's quite a central uh, project to my life as an artist uh, around the question of who am I and that is my little homework question for all of you answer that question and ponder over it as you wish okay so who we're going to stop there you? Who are you, right? So yeah, who are you? <laughs> right, yeah. who are you? Could you answer that question clearly? <laughs> Charlotte was like, that's the question I want all your educators, parents, yeah. teachers, coaches to ask themselves. Who are yeah. you? Can you answer that? Yeah. Who is the 
Who is the starfish inside of you? What's the diamond? The I wrote a little note. What is it? The diamond. Yeah. Who's the diamond within you um, that makes you sparkle? So like when you're in doing your daily life, what is it that makes you sparkle? And notice when you are feeling that you're sparkling, what are you actually doing? Uh, or what are you thinking about? And that is a big clue as to who you are or part of who you are. And, and, um, and this is a big... Oh, I'll just say, and he said, I am the light. And Joshua said, I yeah. am creative. So cool. what I want you guys to think about is, is Charlotte saying, but when do you feel like you're most in your light? And yeah. when, what are you doing when you are creating? So what is, are you creating food? Are you creating music? Are you yeah. creating, so what is that that really lights you up and come mm. back to that question? Yeah. And what makes you feel enthusiastic? What makes you feel like you're the light? Um, for me, I feel like it when I'm in my studio or doing, uh, working on my art projects, or if I'm going forwards on any of my my other projects that I have going on. Um, like at the moment, I'm setting up the, the back end of my art business. And so anything that I do that's working on that makes me feel that I'm flowing in the river. And um, so it, it take to go back to that question, 2011 was a big turning point for me when a friend of mine did ask me that question and I didn't know quite how to answer it. And so um, it made me want to, to go deeper in, into it. And so the, the, the theme of that project, uh, you, is, is really um, how we become who we are and it's a fascinating process for me to have obviously lived my own life and to then put myself in the background as the observer of that and see the whole process of how a person becomes themselves um for me is a very collaborative uh experience and i if i think about how i became who i was it's uh, a lot to do with my experience my experience going through life um, and that is a lot of the time shared experience with people and the marks that they leave on me um, through the lessons I've learned from them or from the adventures that we shared together or uh, a, a course that we did together or um, you know nearly dying in a car crash or all sorts of uh, events that happen in your life that that forge who you become and um, for me the whole project is dedicated to the collaboration of becoming who I am with those people. And it's an honor towards the people. So um, each person I've picked, uh, I draw a portrait of them and uh, there'll be a bit of writing about who they are. And so the end of the book, there'll be, um, it's gonna be a different, uh, several different volumes um, to, to kind of, depict the, the, some of the key characters in my life um, through a hundred portraits and a hundred stories because it's the stories that we uh, we have after these experiences that we then take to the end of our lives and so this is that's the the essence of that that main project um, wow. so um, that's amazing but, Charlotte that you're taking <laughs> that question right? Mm. Who am I? And then thinking about the people that have shaped and influenced mm. you in your life, and then doing an artistic reflection of them mm -hmm. with art and writing, and then creating a mm. hundred stories. Like it, so is this become, become going to be like an art gallery for you, uh, where you display the people in your life and, and their images of them, like a mini? Um, it'll, it'll be definitely be exhibition and I have done exhibitions of some of the portraits that I've done so far I'm almost halfway through I'm, a, I'm around at, at 40 portraits so far um so but it's taken me a very long time because um just trying to support myself through you know doing the project and um obviously you know paying the rent um I've been working full-time in the film business um for periods of my life and um you know, just just trying to be authentic to my true, my my life 
purpose and who I am. So um, for me, it's been a very kind of difficult, in some in some ways, very difficult journey because um, it's not all art isn't always seen as something that's very important or well, not necessarily important, but valued necessarily to to cover all those expenses that I have. But um, I've managed to go through it and, you know, through commissions and selling, you know, my art, my inventory and um, doing exhibitions and so on. I have, you know, carried on and muscled through and it's 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 working out um, and through ju- just working out and 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 kind of finding out who I am through through just living. Um, that's just helped to kind of steer me, you know, keep me on that path and, and have the courage to stay on that path because there's so many times where I've, you know, been thrown, you know, off the path and maybe kind of been distracted by a certain thing and or just been so kind of... Um, I find that found it too difficult to carry on and, and then thought to myself, well, oh, maybe I'll like when I was a trainer, I was a personal trainer for six years and I thought, oh, maybe this is a way I could um, try and support my art. If I'm a, a personal trainer and then and then uh, do, you know, use the, the finances from that to fund my art. And it, it ended up being um, not not a good formula. And it, I it wasn't as creative as I'd um and initially thought it could be, although it was quite a creative vocation, it's almost like you're sculpting a person. So in that respect, it was quite creative, but um, it just showed me that I need more creativity. So it was kind of, even when you do get thrown off your path, it, it kind of, if you're aware enough, self-aware enough, then you can, it gives you a clue as to where you should be going. And then if you, you have the courage to to carry on um going towards you know your authentic self then you, you know you get point you keep getting pointed in the right direction um so i think that that's what i i think is very important is that your self awareness um is like your one of your central missions in your life is to is to be, be self aware and really get to know who you are because if you don't know who you are then how are you going to know where your life pers- purpose is and how to to go towards it and so that, that that would be one of my biggest takeaways is to um to really take the time and and make it an important thing in your life to really get to know who you are um and sometimes it it might be like you're going down the wrong path or you know things are going really badly but but you should just keep on going and um life is never a straight line it's it's always a winding river right so um yeah for me it's it, it's it's been a really beautiful journey so charlotte that's super cool i love that you have put this into like uh like putting it into an art display right all these people that have impacted you because as you put this gala together right these reflections of these images and these portraits and how these people have helped shape who you are you're going to be you know really setting forth inquiring and getting people everybody else who comes to look at this and observe all of this artwork to ask the same question of themselves and the journey Mm -hmm the self growth and the self journey of you doing that is is really powerful. Is anybody have any questions for Charlotte that you want to ask her? Like one of my questions, Charlotte, I want to ask you is who is one of the most important influencers in your life? That you um, did? Yeah. yeah, I would say and I haven't done a portrait of him yet. But um, that's the guy that asked me that question. Um, who are you? Uh, that would be one of the main influences in my life and and then after that uh I I think William Whitecloud is also a main a main kind of teacher in my life um who I have learned immense amounts of like valuable information a lot of it about intuition and how to uh, use my intuition as a tool to to kind of guide me very uh naturally and organically towards wherever i should be going and, what and I like uh, too, 
Charlotte, is that you are mm. actually turning it into something. So it's not mm. just thinking about it and talking about it, like you're living mm. and experiencing and creating. So that's what we're saying here. It's like, we don't want you to just listen and keep doing and doing and doing more and more and more. But mm. how do you internalize it? How do you now, like with our kindness kits, how do you go back now and, mm. you know, teach and tell and share it with somebody else? So putting it into action. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love yeah. that you doing with this um with this gala and what you're doing and putting this all into like an art form which feeds your soul and then it also teaches everybody else so we're yeah. running down to 420 so we got 10 more minutes um okay. charlotte and then we're going to do our kindness kits but you were talking okay. about the triangle you've got the yeah. areas if you want to anchor us what those three areas are and then charlotte's going to come mm -hmm. back everybody and do uh three sessions with us kind of like you would on uh, an art gallery where where you have it into three parts <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean um part of the vision that i have to of what what i want to create with with my the rest of my life is um uh a, a kind of online platform where people can learn um and explore three main topics one is creativity the second is nutrition and the third is movement and um since i was very young i've had two major passions uh one is movement and sports um and physical activity and the second is uh creativity and artistic endeavor and the one has fed into the other um so when i was a personal trainer and i was an athlete i learned a lot about nutrition and it, it taught me that um if you want to create optimum well-being in your life um i think those three those three pillars or those three points of the triangle are uh, the three most important ingredients to your optimum well-being. And if you have optimum health and optimum well-being, then you are normally on the right path and because you're your happiest, you're le the least stressed, you're enjoying what you're doing, you're aware of yourself because otherwise you wouldn't have got there. And um, if you're doing... If you're keeping your body healthy and limber, then that includes doing movement. You can't you can't otherwise do that. So those things, or they they because if you're not healthy, then you, how can you carry on being true to yourself? And so they they feed each other. And so and that would be your creativity is at the top because your purpose. Yeah passion is what lights you up and then you've got yeah. the nutrition and you've got the mm. movement and we call it the three super brains the head brain the heart mm. brain and the gut brain so you can mm -hmm. become the best that you can be and grow your hero mm. so that's yeah. why when Charlotte was talking about that it really resonated but we've mm. only it's 4 24 it's going by so okay. fast can you do yeah. our mind mapping with us exercise <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure and then we'll do, um, we'll do everybody's kindness presentations and you can listen in and maybe we can even start the mind mapping and then finish the mind mapping at um after so we'll do yeah, it yeah we could yeah so um i would we would me and tammy were talking this morning about um how we could do the mind mapping to include everybody and um so we were gonna start off with um the Star Hero Academy is center. Is that what you was, we were saying that this morning, weren't we? Well, we could even start off with Kindergarten Masterclass, the stories, because everything all comes oh, right. from the story. So yeah. the star represents yeah. stories, thinking, adaptability, and resilience. So okay. the star in the middle, yeah. that would help. So I'm just going to shift the camera slightly. Okay, perfect. So, then. <clears throat> so we're going to have the star in the middle. Are there how many points are, you, are there to the star? Are there? We can do uh, we can do two triangles, which makes a six pointed star. Six points. Okay. Cool. And then. That one is um, 
kindergarten masterclass. That's what you want to call that store. Yeah, well, we're it's going to be our um, like our our roadmap to our North Star. So we start with starfish, which is oh, our, this is the starfish. Yeah, our inner sparkle and what lights us up, and then. And it, it's, it's a map, it's a roadmap to our North Star. So first we need to know our inner world. And then when we know our, our discover our diamonds within, our, our gifts, our jewels, our gems, our, our superpowers, our talents, then we can land on our North Star, which is our way and our why. Yeah. And so if everybody wants to start to maybe join in and unmite, what we're going to do is we're going to try to put all of, create a mind map about what we've been learning in kindergarten masterclass. We'll just start it. And then maybe Mama Melissa, if um, you want to um, give us a little bit of a break, we'll listen to your um, kindness kit and then we'll jump back to finishing the mind mapping. And then we'll just continue with other people who want to share their kindness kits today. So super fun. Cool. Okay, does anybody, um, so do you want to tell us what the first objective is, and then we'll just get started with it, Charlotte, for mind mapping, like how do we do a yeah. mind Okay, so um, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to take the camera a little bit out of this, Oops. and um, I'm going to turn the camera around here. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, here. Whoops. There. So this is um this is an example of a mind map that I did when I was on um a business course in uh, a couple of years ago, and so it's really it's kind of like a brain dump, and uh, so I was trying to work on my why, and and then I I I started off with. Um, I think it was, yeah, my why, which I wrote down here. I'm Charlotte Greenwich, an, art, an artist, filmmaker, an artist, and an embodiment of creativity, integrity, passion, and courage, using the visual arts as a vehicle to portray and discuss the issues encompassing our interconnectedness as a human race, global warming, and environmental pollution. So that was um, my mission is to create unity within humanity, reconnecting humans with each other and with nature and to defend, restore and nurture our natural environment. So that was, that was what it was back then. It's still kind of pretty much true. And then so I had so then I thought, you know, what's relate what's related to that in terms of values? So, you know, integrity, authenticity, creativity, passion, blah, blah. blah all of those kinds of things. And then you start um, branching off and with your mind, with your, like your thoughts and think, okay, well, how could I, what could I do? Workshops um, to, to share that message. Um, so then workshops and then what would that bring from doing the workshops? Uh, productivity, innovation, creativity, imagination. So, and then how would I monetize those workshops? Um, and then so and then you might have a different uh, thread artwork how I, I could also spread that message through doing artwork and then original artworks uh, corporate commissions private commissions um, exhibitions projects art documentaries but and then can you see how it all links and I just did this because my brain just works at 100 miles an hour sometimes and putting it into a computer is very linear and I can't see how everything links together. So you can see all these arrows um, that take you to different, different parts. And then from, so, you know, from those different parts, you can split off and then it branches off into even more things. So um, I would say a, a, a mind map is kind of like a tree, a tree of ideas. Um, so what we've got now is a uh, star. That's our initial starfish. What lights us up is the roadmap to our North Star. So think about things that might light you up, um, like, I don't know, uh, hiking or, or cooking or biking or drawing or, um, I don't know, m making things out of 
macrame or like, knitting or all sorts of things like what what lights you up football okay, i'm gonna stop um, you there charlotte because our your brain does and this is we just want to make sure we ground everybody because this is a yeah. really fun exercise can everybody take a pencil and paper right now and draw your star and create six points that light you up so we're just going to do that and then once we're done that i'll give you one minute to do that everybody can draw it and so charlotte's going to draw her star what lights her up and once we're done then mama melissa if you're ready we'll start your kindness kit and then we'll come back and we'll start to um good idea but everybody's going to work right now on their star i'm going to work on mine too and <laughs> points that light me up so I'm doing a triangle first, one triangle, and then I'm making an upside down triangle. So this is how I'm making my star. One triangle and then an upside down. And now I'm gonna just put six foot lights in. Okay. So, Mama Melissa, do you are you going to be ready to do your um oh, writing away? And I, okay, yeah, I I'll, um, give you, I'll give you thirty more seconds. I'll just so oh, you I'm know. I'm so good. I'm so good. While you guys are finishing up, I just want to say thank you to Charlotte. Two things. Number one, um, my biggest breakthroughs came after mind mapping, and so I love this process. And thank you for sharing the huge visual because so many people I think are under the misinformation that you cannot have it all, do it all and be it all. And that's just baloney, you can. And when you dump it, you see the collaboration between those thoughts and how you discover that. So I'm excited to be on this journey with you, Charlotte, and looking forward to the three um, sessions that we get. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that I'm a zealot for Napoleon Hill. I um, will be certified shortly with his foundation, and I loved his book, Think and Grow Rich. Andrew Carnegie employed him without pay to go out and interview the highly successful people that were emerging in America after the Depression when the playing field had been leveled, similar to now. And without pay for 25 years, like you, Charlotte, he had to make his way and find different things to make money while he was accomplishing this task. And at the end of the 25 years, what was produced was the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon oh, Hill, wow. the second most read book after the biblical scriptures. So I just want to share with you, Charlotte, I see you. And it was the very first self-improvement book. Everybody who's speaking on self-improvement right now bases it on Napoleon Hill's first book. Mm. And what I see, Charlotte, in my incredible brain is you being the second person to absolutely bring together a process that is a catalyst for the next 5G, for the next energetic shift, for the next um, Think and Grow Rich um, exposure and experience. And you will be highly successful because you have had the challenges through the journey because you have made your way and still found that passion to push forward to your why. So thank you for that. I want to introduce you. I don't thank know if you, you Mama Melissa. I love how you champion everybody. Like, I'm sure, like, listen, Charlotte's just feeling on cloud nine right now with the validation uh, that you just gave to her. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's it. It's like her big vision is so beautiful and so large. And yeah. I love that you yeah. honored her spirit and soul and how she came today and the dots that you connected for all of us after she spoke. So thank you. I, I have goosebumps all the way up to the back of my head. My hair is standing up on my head. I see you. I do. Would, I would like to have your autograph before you're that famous. Um, uh, but I see you. I see it coming together. I want to introduce you um, to one of the things that brings me goosebumps and, and uh, causes me uh, to, to resist and work on my inner child. And that is kindergarten masterclass. And one of the things that Tammy Valeris introduced to us was our kindness gifts um, for a beautiful season. We're into the second day of Hanukkah and of course Christmas begins very shortly. And the thing that touches my heart most are these processes. Not only yours, Charlotte, that you're gonna bring forward because p systems set us free. And when we have systems in place, we are free to be who we are. Joshua Finch has a system and he is free 
and and anybody who knows Joshua Fence, that freedom creates things that blow your mind. So this blew my mind. And why did it? Because I was really anxious about getting it right. And Tammy doesn't really mind if we get it right or not. What she minds is that we follow a process that allows us to learn, <laughs> teach, um, and then to and share, and then to empower whether there are littles or other adults. And so I've shared this with adults and I've shared this with my Henry. This is Kiko. Kiko is coming out of my kindness gift box. Um, and Ki uh, Kiki, Kiki is um, my spirit animal for this particular um, exercise. And my, of course, our lesson is kindness right now. His habit, which is part of the process, is curiosity. And it's asking. And why? Well, because the tool is Kiki's voice and my voice and Henry's voice to start a conversation to um, when you're observant and commenting, or you have a genuine compliment, it helps reveal in others their um, gifts and their inner light and eventually their, their journey to their star hero, right? And so our tool is our voice and always being willing to ask a question or make an observant comment or compliment to the people that we share the planet with. And so what is our tip? Oh, Kiki, our tip are compliments and positive um, observations to help people see that their light um, and their love and their gift and their inner star hero. Agree? I knew you would. And so what's our activity? Because not only our spirit animal and our lesson for life and our habit and our tool and our tip, um, but it's our activity. So we have one that is called aware and share. We stumbled across these. There are no accidents in universe. But this one says you are loved. And this one says you get what you give. And this one says a positive attitude will lead to positive outcomes. And when you engage in a conversation with somebody um, and you will be unstoppable, this says, then to leave behind the impression, um, Kiki and I are sharing these wear and share little bracelets to remind people that we had that conversation and they are valued. So our activity is in our wear and share bracelets and that is our kindness um, kit for this holiday season. And thank you so much for letting me participate. Oh my God, can everybody give her a, a, a show to yeah. love? Thank you. Great words of wisdom. So Oh. And I love, imagine if we had all of these on our arms and we just made it our mission to, ha to have and start curious conversations with people and make sure that by the end of the day, they were all, you know, gifted away. And we had all those different people in our lives and a memory and a gift. And we left a positive impression. I love the idea of wherever you go. Uh, the law of increase make everybody feel better because you came into their presence and that is right napoleon hill and i love those arm bracelets and the amazing idea around that activity that was well, your your entire team from joshua finch and i can't remember everyone's name um and i'm learning them but you have an incredible team who have takeaways and creative um arts so between us all in our collaboration this year uh, Tammy Valeris of Valeris Way will have wear and shares um, for all of us to be able to purchase and to wear and to share um, as we go into uh, 2020, not as we go into, but as we get through 2023. So Tammy, your team is going to be on it. We just got to get our patents and our copyrights under control, right? I, I, right. And I love that. Alio, do you have one of those wear and shares on you? <laughs> do you have a yes. bracelet? Yeah, I see that. I have a bracelet and it says here, our problem, our solution, our people. I love it. <laughs> and these are all dream trips, dream trips. <laughs> and I'm making those dream trips right now. <laughs> I have one too. So I'm going to grab it, Mama Melissa, because you've just created the dominoes effect. So mine here is a LinkedIn superhero. I'm a LinkedIn superhero. 
<laughs> and I've got one of these that was gifted to me, but I love this, right? Like I'm a kindergarten masterclass educator hero. So that would be super cool. And then people ask you, well, what is that? Right. And you, and you gift it and share it. So this is super cool. Um, that was amazing. Does anybody else want to go up next? Cause that was incredible so fun to hear it you put it into life and take a leadership and i love how you animated it it was like a, a vanquilla uh like you were like a vanquilla what, what do you say how do you say it ventriloquist ventriloquist yes <laughs> is that kiki the name of your monkey yeah so cute anybody else want to share was there anybody else who came prepared that wanted to do their um kindness kit If not, we, oh. Norma Jean looks like she's on mute. Norma uh, yeah. Jean, we are sending you so much love right now. She's not feeling very good, but she's a trooper coming on board. Um, she didn't want to miss out on today, so I'm so grateful to have you. But she did do her kindness kit, and she even sent it to me in Canva. So did you want to present yours, Norma Jean? Um, I can. I, I don't, I'm kind of, don't have a really good voice right now, but um can I share my screen? Because that's that's yeah, how I do it. Wait, hold on one second. Yeah, perfect. Um, I'm not super prepared, but that's okay. Hey, you're <clears throat> one of the prepared ones. You've done this. Uh, you're you're seasoned with us. <laughs> Go ahead, Norma Jean. Okay. Um. Oh, hang on here one sec. Sorry. <clears throat> Uh, why can't I get this to work? Which one? Um, can you see my screen? You can see yes. all of us. I'm guessing that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Where's the present button? If you uh, click on share. Yeah. And then go down right there. Nope, up. And there's a circle icon. Oh, right there. There. Yay. There it is. Yeah, mm. you got it. Okay, now I don't know what you can see. Can you see it now? I see it perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so my my spirit animal is dog, and uh, it's not surprising that that's the animal that I chose to represent kindness because um, I just think that dogs are the epitome of love and kindness. They're so uh, empathetic and intuitive, and they always seem to know when a person uh, or even other animals need comforting. And they so happily oblige, don't they? So my lesson for life is the power of kindness. And it's just that a little bit of kindness goes a really long way. <clears throat> and it can be expressed in the simplest of ways, like this little fellow here who's giving a, a hug, right? Or an encouraging word or an offer of help or a congratulatory pat on the back or even just a smile sometimes, right? We never really know what people are going through when they're going through it, right? So dogs celebrate uh, their our wins with us and they're happy to comfort us when that's what's needed. And I'm just gonna go through this. I quickly. love that you're saying that dogs celebrate our wins with us because that's sometimes what people have a hard time doing, right? Is they sometimes our jealousy gets in the way, but dogs don't. They love us unconditionally, no matter what we do. And they're excited with us all the time. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> um, so actually I go back there. So no matter what, uh, dogs always offer us love and kindness. And, and have you ever had a dog come and lay their head on your lap or snuggle with you when you're feeling sad or you're in grief or whatever it's because they are so intuitive about that and they just accept us the way we are and I think that that's um, how I look at kindness because it requires a level of acceptance and a willingness to lead with kindness no matter what and um, because I'm a teacher and kindergarten master class is about teaching children this is how I apply it to teaching right when a child is struggling to believe in themselves or to regulate or whatever. <clears throat> I just keep being kind until the child can learn to love themselves again. And so this kid here, we all know this kid and uh, behaviors always tell a story and what might look like defiance or mischief to us is likely more of an avoidance tactic or a way of masking something, right? 
So <clears throat> when a when a person is feeling uncertainty <coughs> or they're anxious or worried about making a mistake, oftentimes they're going to act out. And we all know this feeling because we've all we've all been in those positions where we've had those feelings of anxiety. And but this is the time when those are the, those kids are telling themselves those limiting beliefs like this is too hard or I'm terrible at this. And again, it's our kindness that's going to go a long way <clears throat> in helping kids through those difficult emotions. So my habit is to see the best in people, um, even when even when it's hard to, <laughs> right? Um, because we have to understand that people, the way they act is a result of the way they feel. And so that's just a snapshot of who they are in the moment, just like Wonder Whale, right? No, he had a problem that not everybody knew what it was, right? But all they saw was how he was grumping and harumping, uh, but he had a deeper reason for what was making him upset. And when Turtle saw the best in Whale and showed him <clears throat> kindness and helped him solve his problem, well, the real Wonder Whale was able to shine. <laughs> so my tools are sticky notes. <clears throat> Words of kindness can be that lift that someone needs to change the direction that they're going in and to turn the situation around. And so uh, my tip is to go and love someone exactly as they are and then watch how quickly they transform into the greatest, truest version of themselves. Can I say to you too, you know, I see these love notes, these sticky notes all the time coming in through the kids' lunch boxes. And they want me to read them to them. And it's just so uplifting, not only for the child, but for me to read them to the child. And, and the thought that it went it, putting love into their little lunch boxes or their snacks. Um, it's just, I love the, the sticky notes. This is. Thank you. And that is my hero action. And I've actually done this with um, kids that I've worked with. I was working with one child who was, he had a lot of trouble getting along with other kids and he kind of was one of those kids that any attention was good attention and so he often acted out um and so what I did was I just had this stack of sticky notes and I would write little messages on them and throughout the day I would just casually walk past him and I'd stick one on the desk and he'd read it and he would just light up, right? And it honestly, it took a week to turn his behaviors completely around because by me seeing who he really was, mm -hmm. it allowed him to see who he really was too. So this is my hero action is just having sticky notes and um, and then giving them out. I love that. That was so good. Yeah. That was good. I love being the student. <laughs> right? It's so much fun just being a student listener learner um, and, and sharing the lead with all of you amazing souls because you guys have so much wisdom and, and genius and skills and experiences inside of you guys. And I love the structure and the format which frees us because it becomes just repetition. We all just know exactly what to do and we get comfortable and more confident in the delivery. Um, I, it, it's just, it's fabulous. And, uh, yeah, Joshua, go ahead. And, and I feel like, so first of all, that was fantastic. Thank you. Cause I love dog. That's my first animal and, um, unconditional love. And then just the way that you displayed it. But I also felt like not only was that you sharing your kindness kit, but I actually got to step behind the lens of your eyes and see how you present. Like for me, one of the things that light me up is, is, the love for learning and, and exploring the process. Like I like studying people and seeing their process and how do I figure out how they did it so I can like play with it and be creative and have more tools to be creative in my own process. And I know me and you have played before and you're like, you do it a special way and then you can support me creatively and all this. And I know I'm this kind of brain and I'm not the same as yours. And I feel like I got to actually like put on your glasses and watch you. You had a little timer up at the top. You had the clock here. You had your words here. Like, I know, I'm not sure if you actually knew that we were seeing all of that, which I was like, no. you don't even know, which is even better because I wanted you to just be like totally authentic. But we got to actually sit behind the lens of your brain. And that was your process. And that was so beautiful. And for me, I desire that sometimes. And I like the freedom of just 
speaking it and being fun and playful and coming up with stuff on the fly because I'm creative in that space. But uh, not only was it beautiful presentation, I really love sitting behind the lens of your eyes and being inside your brain for a little minute because that's what I felt like it. So thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Joshua. And I love that you're a trooper, Norma Jean. Like, here's Norma Jean sick. She's been in bed. She's like, I don't even want to come on camera, Tammy. And yet she did. And this is what I love. It's like, you know, she she did her best and she knew she didn't. You know, you look gorgeous, by the way. Don't worry about it, Norma Jean. Um, but you you did, and this is what encourages other people when they think they have to be so perfect or everything has to be just so right, then we actually talk ourselves out of, you know, stepping into the ring and being vulnerable. And what I love too, is like one thing, one tool I love to put on is my magical glasses. And I always say, you know what, I don't see you. I don't see this behavior. I see the truth of who you are. So mm -hmm. even partnering up the magical glasses with the sticky notes, like when I mm -hmm. have my, my magical glasses on, this is who I know you to be right and so this is where like it's like oh I've got my magical glasses I know that's not the truth of who you are and I love partnering something with that and that's where when you start to share we can my ideas start to go crazy and we start to like spin off of each other does anybody else want to unmute and just share with um um and and say something and then we'll jump back to uh Charlotte and maybe even Charlotte wants to comment on what she's been listening and learning about <laughs> Anybody want to share? Anne Marie, did you want to share? Say hello. How can you read my mind? <laughs> I, I'm a mind reader. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, mine is not completed, but it's it's interesting. I'm going to share the process that happened with me. Um, I'm a meditator. And when I desire to do something creative, I will go into a meditation. So I asked a question. So what would my kindness box toolkit look like? What is the animal? It was so beautiful. So I started it and this is my box. It's a small box. And what happened is that the animal appeared and the animal was a butterfly. So to me, the butterfly is transformation. So then it was just leading me to the next thing, the next tip and this and that, not in a linear fashion. It just came very creatively and I allow it to happen that way. So what I did, I went to the dollar store and to me, the butterfly is the color purple. So I, I, I want to talk about the color purple, the color of transformation. And what came to me is this, as I told you, it was a creative process. So I saw this butterfly in my meditation landing on my hand. Mm. So as soon as it landed on my hand, the first thing I did in my heart was like, oh, oh, and then the smile. So my kindness is all about the smile, how the smile brings out our light and helps to transform. And I even found this at the dollar store. This is so awesome. I need to show you this. Look, the butterfly that creates light when we smile. So I still have to put it all together. What is the tip, the habit and all of that. But uh, I, I just love it. So this is what I've done up to now. And I'm inspired by listening to Mama Melissa and uh, Norma Jean, thank you so much. That's going to help me to put it all together. Oh, I love it. I love that we have the process and we're not fully there yet. So we're showing different stages, which this is what growth is, right? We're not all ready at the same time to present. We all are. And that allows us the time and the growth. But you know what I love is that you've connected kindness to transformation. Because if you think of what Turtle did, Terrific Turtle, you know, was act of kindness with the um, um, hair, right, transformed her into harmony hair. What Pout Pout transformed Pout Pout's attitude with 
the sea monster transformed her, him back into Wonder Whale. So all these stories, Anne-Marie, have really been kindness can transform a life. It can transform our hearts. It can transform a situation. So, and I love that you're using the color purple and you're allowing yourself, you're not forcing yourself, right? Terrific turtles always like slow and steady and allow us Allow it to come in. Don't try to just get stuck with the timeline and the, and the date line of it, but just allow it. So what a beautiful, beautiful. And I have one more thing, Tammy, that came to me is the heart. So the heart is also part of this because in this meditation, I saw myself sometimes smiling. You know, everyone, sometimes we have like a forced smile. It's like, you know, like that. But when we smile from the softness of our heart, it is a different smile. Mm, I love the different types of smiles. Like I know. Yeah, so we awesome. can do that as activities with kids, you know, do a fake smile, do like, you know, yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> that like, would be a super fun activity, right? Like, I know. So, you know, this course for me, it's all about playing, yeah. being creative, getting in touch with my inner child. So I show up as I am today. As unprepared as I am, it's not in a linear way, but I have a sense of what this box is about. Well, so thank you for allowing me to share. I love it. And, you know, in thinking Charlotte's probably already thinking like the crooked smile, right? Like the crooked smile, the sly smile, like there's all these different, and you could turn this into a visual arts activity where you're doing all these different types of smiles and these different characters. And then what are they thinking behind that smile? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, like, I love this. This is so much fun. And thank you. I love that you came again, not prepared, but you're showing everybody else you know, you don't have to be fully prepared to show up. And Marie, you know, not feeling her best. She didn't have to feel her best to, to participate. So it gives permission to everybody else that sometimes puts too high of an expectation or too much nerves to say, I'm not ready, I can't do it. And then they just hold back and then they're holding back from the process as well, right? Instead of, you know, leaning into it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not about perfection. It's about just doing and, and trying our best. So thank you for trying your best and doing an amazing job that's inspiring us. So I love you. Awesome. Anybody else want to jump in? Um, I, I wanted to jump back to Charlotte. Charlotte, how are you enjoying this call and, and these kindness kits presentations? Uh, I love it. Um, I now understand much more uh, in depth the, uh, the different qualities of, of the kindness kit and, and how like one thing has led to another and through the system and so there's several things I was writing down as you guys were speaking um which was very inspiring by the way um one is the system is sets you free I really saw the essence of that and the kind of the the, the power of that through um the examples uh, of all these creative the, these creative examples they're in essence examples of creativity because um you you've like thought of an animal and then uh there's all these different uh characteristics of an animal that makes made you think of you know the the tool and the task and you know um leading you through the system and so there is like i <laughs> my mind's like all blooming in all sorts of direct directions but it, it was really um a display of the art of teaching and i thought how important um the actual action of teaching is and um and and basically the role of the imagination and the thing that's really interesting is um you know when children get to the age of about four or five their imagination and their creativity starts to take a nosedive and so just these little systems and exercises are so good for anybody of any age and most importantly for children um because it it keeps using their creativity and using their imagination uh for longer and i i, I think there's there's so much there's so many things that make me 
you know, that, that, that could illustrate how important imagination is, but just in, in the how uh, in, information is passed along. And you can go back to primitive times, um, you know, when they used to tell stories around a campfire and, uh, and using very simple things to, to, to symbolize something else uh, that they're trying or to symbolize something that they're trying to teach. Like you were saying, for example, you, you use just your fingers to, to make a glass to suspend, to suspend disbelief and use your imagination to think that these are magic glasses and that they'd change the way you see the world when you just hold your hands up in front of your eyes. I mean, how simple can that be? Um, but it's, it's, it's to do with your imagination and then uh, imagining there's this filter in front of your eyes to see something and teach teach something that's quite important and um yeah like i think creativity is actually being able to see uh patterns in things uh where uh how do i say this i kind of lost my train of thought but it, it's really being able to um to see relationships between things that that weren't obvious before and so that's the kind of uh using these little these objects um to to symbolize other things and the fact that um you know you you were talking about all these different smiles and there are many different smiles that 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 show different feelings but it's it's also um the whole thing of this exercise of kindness kits and coming up with one yourself is a really great exercise in observation. And so if you're, at, you know, when you go into observation, for me, that's a, it's a big thing. Like uh, observation for me is one of my major um, skills that I, I teach people when I teach them how to do art. Um, and and it's, it's basically goes further than art but it goes into understanding each other and if you can observe different smiles and we kind of take a lot of it for granted but if you can observe different smiles and, and associate different smiles with different feelings then it, it, you know that that goes it, it's it's really important to um when you're thinking also of animals like why did you choose the dog why did you choose the butterfly why did you choose the monkey because we associate different attributes to each of these monkey uh, to each of these animals and so it's part that's the result of observing those animals and so it really gets it goes quite far into into humanity or into like the whole universe as as a whole like when you come up with your stories you're teaching people about a certain value or a certain um part of the life journey but at the same time you're using you're using nature as a kind of metaphor and you're creating an imaginary story around it, which I find absolutely incredible. I love it. So I, I all love to say too that you said about your superpower because I've mm -hmm. seen your artwork. If you guys have seen it in the Facebook group, what Charlotte creates is like, it almost looks like a photograph, but it's, it's a drawing. And I know that she has to look like when you're doing painting, you have to look mm -hmm. at all the different layers mm -hmm. of the skin color to create that painting and change it. And then the, every line on the face has to really zone in. So it's, it's looking a hundred times before you put that line on the paper yeah. right it's like really yeah. deep dive and we sometimes just do things just so quickly and we and this is the whole point behind master classes we want to do a deep dive because we rush through learning we rush through life we let rush through lessons and we don't really do a deep dive investigation and get curious and mm -hmm. and go deeper with it in the inquiry base or curiosity mm -hmm. base and using our powerful imagination to really grow the ideas so when you have that structure it's like you can now get everybody on the page very quickly and then mm -hmm. start to connect and play with one another as well and get ready mm -hmm. in the process. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show you quickly um, one of the drawings or, or some of them. If, if you see, like just looking at the expression of somebody's face and, <laughs> and 
looking at and looking at who they really are. That's actually my sister, so I know her very well. But I, all of the words that I've written in, I don't know if they're back to front or not, but um, you can you can see like all of the words that are to do with her her character and and who she is. Um, she's actually a writer and a, a, a screenwriter and a director, a film director. Are you um, not in awe, everybody? Like, have you ever seen anything <laughs> like that before in your life? And then this, this is another one. This is um, my dad. And um, he's he's actually a very mysterious guy. He's very reserved, and but he's very wise. And he's got this mystery about him. So there's like, and, and I just think that especially in, elderly people there's a map of their life which is their face and and that's what I find so interesting is that every every little wrinkle in in their face is it's because of what they've done in their life it's you know your basically your your body and your face is an expression of your life experience and I think that is just that in itself is really amazing. You know what um, I'm thinking too, Charlotte, if you did, you know, because you're wanting to make how many images, like you're at 40 or something, but if you just yeah. did the one task where you asked everybody to just look mm. at the smile on mm. everybody's face, those 40 <laughs> smiles in all those portraits that you did or the hundred <laughs> portraits that you want to do, just the one mm. thing that was the one task is look at the smile and see. Well, they're not all smiling. <laughs> well, or look at the expression. Just look at the mouth, right? Like yeah, the expression. Just the expression on the mouth or just the eyes. Like, just one task to really give them so that they have the one thing to connect to all the different images, which that's what mm -hmm. prompted my concept is because of Anne Marie's and then looking, thinking about all your pictures and imagery. So I love this conversation. Mm -hmm. I, I see mm -hmm. um, Rebecca wants to jump in and share her kit, but we'll come back unless you want to just mm -hmm. finish something quickly and then we'll go back to um, Rebecca. She is going to do a kindness kit share as well. Mm. Um. And yeah, I mean, just to finish off the, the the whole exercise is really like just makes you go deeper into how you think of um, animals and uh, our whole environment, like our, our world, our universe. And just because, you, you know, the whole task is to come up with the story around a certain character, which is your animal, and then... Uh, all the the little steps afterwards and and so I, that's what I really find um where the transformation can happen just just listening to your your stories and your like the the, the animal and then why all the rest of the the, the the steps are are there has just shown you know it, that is transformation in itself and doing that exercise um because then you're connecting yourself to that animal so it's yeah it's just reiterating the whole um thing that you know imagination and creativity are very important and um and and the fact that somebody that a teacher is is passing on this information and, and enabling the children or even the adult to to go through that growth path so when you do that to your life and your starfish and you, you come up with your starfish and then your uh, North Star, then that's, I think, half the battle of anybody's life journey. So, yeah. Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> I'm going to let everyone else talk now. <laughs> I, I love that, Charlotte. And I love that, you know, what you're doing is we're creating a common language to connect mm. each other to our animal, <clears throat> but also then now connecting to each other because we're using yeah. this structure. So, mm. you know, I am the we are and the, and the consciousness of both you know self and ourselves within a wholer organism right mm -hmm. and structure so really mm -hmm. awesome so rebecca thank you um for being so patient um welcome we're going to come back to charlotte again so we're just taking some inter in, inter breaks with each other but if you wanted to unmute and share that would be lovely because we're excited to keep the learning happening yes thank you charlotte for sharing those amazing pictures like you brought <laughs> to my eyes like the emotion and the feeling that you have in that and to have the words around it I was like oh my god what an amazing gift to give a family member 
Like that is the most beautiful thing. The what you capture, it's just it's mind blowing. Thank you so much. Um, and I have to say, you hit it on the on the head, Tammy, when you said about like Anne Marie and because I wasn't going to share. And then because the fact she wasn't fully prepared, I was like, okay, I can do this because I don't have it all written up and like, it's okay. And it's all right. And so thank you for that. And like, you read my mind when you started saying all that, I was like, this is perfect. Like our energy is always just perfect spot on with each other. So my animal um, is a caterpillar morphing into a butterfly. So I'm like, that is so funny that hers is a butterfly. And the reason for that being is, is because caterpillars, they, they start eating and feeding and stocking up and then they wrap this cocoon around and it's, and it's like this rippling effect of they go from a caterpillar into a butterfly. And so for me, it is teaching ourselves and the children because we know that we are mirrors of each other. And a lot of times things that I um, get to create or do or things that I get to heal in myself a lot of times other people need to heal it or they need to see it so it's always like this this play within the universe of how we are so synergistically connected to each other and so it's teaching ourselves to stop and be present to really read our bodies and our surroundings and what ourselves and what our surroundings need. And so building this muscle to see because you don't necessarily see how little things can happen unless you're stopping and being present in the moment. So what it is, is finding ways um, to uplift others by our words of kindness, to show people's greatness, find moments of where you see something amazing that they're like, oh, I don't know, but then like you're speaking on it like Melissa does and how it just brings out that validation and like, I see you. Um, finding little things, whether it be opening up the door for a fellow student or opening up the door for somebody at the grocery store, loading somebody's groceries. Um, the ripple effect that it creates and the reason why I thought about this is you know, I had posted maybe a month or so ago how I was out at a grocery store and so many people were um, really annoyed because this elderly gentleman was sitting there and he could not pay for his bill. And he kept trying to pay with the card and then a different card and this card. And people were like, oh my God, hurry up already. And I finally was like, I went right on up and I'm like, here. And I paid for his bill. And the girl's like, it's 70 some dollars. I'm like, I don't care. Okay. Pay for it, you know, but the ripple effect, because I saw people, you know, for that split second, they were like, you know, their, their jaws are dropped. And, and so it's the ripple effect that I saw and like being able to say to him, like, I don't want anything from you because profusely he's trying to like, I'll write you a check. I'll run home. I'll come back. No, just do for somebody else. And you know, your pay this forward in whatever fashion, even if it's not money. It's these little things that we do for each other that we can find carrying somebody's book, something, picking something off the floor. But to go further with that is it, at the end of the day. So I wanted to be able to create like whether the kids have like a little book and they're writing these kind of things down, but then realizing and seeing after they have done something, how did they feel within their body? I want them to be able to realize and recognize the shift that we create within our body and how it feels because we're so much energy. And so recognizing that and seeing it, it's going to help build that muscle. It's going to help them to feel that. And then also discuss and talk about it at the end of the day. And it's for adults, like taking this and at the end of the day at dinner time, like my son and I, when we pray, we write like, what are we grateful? You know, we talk about five things we're grateful for for the day. But to be able to write these things down, list some things that you did for the day that created cry you know, kindness that uplifted, that created that ripple effect, especially at the end of the day, because then you're going to look for that in the next day. And the more that you build on this and the more that you do it, it's like that caterpillar that's morphing into the butterfly. It's like you just keep feeding it and feeding it. And then look what it's going to grow into.
And then the more that these children see it and adults see it, it's it's just going to be so second nature. So that's that's what I was thinking about. That's beautiful. So beautiful, Rebecca. First off, on so many levels, I just want to validate a few things. You and Anne-Marie have a really beautiful connection. So I'm not surprised the caterpillar and the butterfly, you know, and the synergy between the two of you and the inspiration that happened and unfolded today was magic. Second, I want to say to you, you know, you didn't just make an impression on that gentleman, but you made an impression on any everybody else that was judging him in that that store that day. So you changed hearts, you you created a really huge rippling effect. The third thing I want to say is I love the idea of putting these kindness acts um, before bed. And I, I even visualize kids doing this uh, before bed in a jar. And then in the morning, they could read it, right? So they could be reminded or at night, they could read all the collections. And even for the end of the week, all the kind things that they do. And then again, my two favorite things that I love to teach in the classroom is, is with a stone and a feather. And my students always refer to when they do acts of kindness, it makes them feel light like a feather. And when they do things that aren't so kind, they feel heavy like the stone. So just even having that, that the more kind things they do, the lighter and lighter they feel. And the symbolism of a caterpillar that feels heavy uh, versus the butterfly that feels very light, right? The caterpillar moves very slowly and it's a lot of work. But as soon as it turns in and transforms into the butterfly, life just gets easy and effortless. So I love all of this and putting this into your box and what an amazing resource kit you've just created. I love that. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for bravery too. I love that you were courageous and see again the rippling effect with um, everybody coming um, and just doing their best, right? Just sharing. That's beautiful. Anybody else want to say anything or unmute? And then we'll go back to Charlotte and end things, if not. So I'll just add a little bit in oh, there. we can't hear you, Joshua. I don't know. Oh, no. I? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Hello. Perfect. I'll say just throwing a little extra synergy on the caterpillar. Um, I was doing an expressive arts uh, process earlier with um, a beautiful friend of mine. And um, what we did is we did a process drawing of the caterpillar. <laughs> And we put something we wanted to let go in the caterpillar. So we imagined ourselves a caterpillar and something we wanted to process around grief because I want to really help somebody with grief at the moment. And they embodied themselves in a caterpillar and then they were walking, walking, walking. Then they went up to the chrysalis and somewhere on the page, we drew this all first and then we envisioned it second. And then we wrapped ourselves with this beautiful seashell kind of like, you know, inside this uh, seashell, it's all glimmery. We wrapped ourselves up with the intention of letting it go and releasing it. So the first thing is I don't want to feel sad. I want, I want to keep going and get better. And then, so that was the caterpillar is sadness and it's kind of hold me down. And then I want to let it go. I want to let it go. I want to let it go. And now I'm inside there and I made sure that she knew that the process of a caterpillar was liquefying. So all the energy that was holding that sadness is actually now liquefying. So I had her imagine she gets warm and get all snuggly and cozy in her caterpillar. And then I said, well, what do you wanna to tell to yourself to, to speak into the butterfly? And she said, I take my power back. I feel confident, I feel free, I feel noticed, I feel heard. And I said, okay, now we're gonna to start to, to sing that. I feel confident, I feel noticed and start to break it out. And with their imagination, you can start to see her hands come out in real life with her eyes closed. And I say, okay, now I want you to start to fly, start free. And then while you fly, I want you to fly and, and feel what it feels like to be free, to be powerful, be confident, and to really fully embody it. And that's me using my creativity to show my love and my arts to help heal and happens to be on a butterfly and transformation, which happens to be the topic. So I just want to throw extra energy in there. So we're all connected on that field. So Thank you. That's all I had to share. So thank you. That's beautiful, Joshua. And I love the creative arts and the movement with Charlotte talking about movement. And it's, again, it doesn't have to be just in an art in, or in a box. It can be with your body. And I envisioned all these silk cloths 
with children and wrapping into the cocoon of underneath these silk It's the cloths. cuddliness of the process too. So it doesn't have to actually be a, a horrifying thing like, oh, you're going into this black cocoon. Oh. No, you're going into this magical silk cuddly blanket to, to, to be warm and cuddly for your transformation. So it depends on how you create the story. And that's, yeah. that's what it was. If these silk cloths could be turned into the wings, right? So then you've got the movement of these wings. Imagine what them all flying around the classroom. Whoa, yeah, that's What so a cool. beautiful creative movement exercise with, with silk cloths, right? Like even if you had them and they don't even have to be like, just go to a, a, a Goodwill, a, a, like a recyclable place and get, get different scarves and get the children to do it. It doesn't even have to be expensive. You could probably get them for, for very inexpensive, but what a creative, cool, creative concept. So again, see the ideas and Charlotte's probably like all the ideas and imagination <laughs> that we're all playing off of each other because we were liberated, because we have been uh, free to, to share. But if everybody sat there tight and, and the only person that felt 100% prepared was mama Melissa and then nobody else followed because they didn't feel their best or they weren't 100% articulated everything. And this conversation would not have given birth and in all these different inspiring ideas would have not been shared. So let's remember this because this is where the power is, is just show up right? And just celebrate where we're at and, and be brave and fearless in going forward. So I love this. This is amazing. And I have to tell you this, Charlotte, because um, you've been doing the, the web, right? The, the uh, mind mapping. I saw five hawks <laughs> on my ride home tonight. I don't think I've seen five hawks in one drive in my entire life. So I have to Google what hawks means. It means seeing the big picture. What does mind mapping do? It's all about seeing all the moving parts coming together. And hawk was like, yep. <laughs> I'm here, we're here, this is going to happen, and we're pulling all the big parts and pieces together. So animals are always with us communicating in different ways. Are we observe enough, alert enough to see and find their messages? So we're going to end things with Charlotte because um, we're coming down to the last 10 minutes, and I want to honor everybody's time and give her the, the final stage to come back to the mind mapping. Um, but thank you. These have been so juicy and good, like Mama Melissa would say. <laughs> All right, Charlotte, you're on. <laughs> wow, um, you guys are just like blowing my mind. Seriously, this is this is a really great talk to just really bring home the the power of creativity for me. And um, I just wrote down a little thing um, as you guys were speaking that that creativity is most powerful when it's shared, um, and when uh, you have more than one person in in, a, in the room or in in at the task, and you're all feeding ideas to to the task. It just it's crazy what comes out of what comes out of that when you're kind of brainstorming or mind mapping together rather than just on your own. And and that's just uh, proof in the pudding that connection is so important and to make people feel connected. And um, yeah, like I can't remember the lady who shared uh, um, this, who wasn't that prepared, but <laughs> um, that's perfect. And it's 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 just another example of um, that you don't need to have the plan. You don't need to you don't need to know what you're going to do. You just need to go forwards and have the courage to do it and start it, and then and then believe that everything's going to come whatever you need will come will come to you and for me that's that's definitely the case uh, in 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 my big picture but i'm just looking at what we did today as a as a group and all these ideas that we had when you were talking about the chrysalis and i just had this whole idea of a stage performance and making a play out of it and it's it's but it's just so simple and you don't need anything fancy to use your imagination seriously it's like such a powerful tool um you don't need the latest ipad with netflix or you know watch a, a movie or whatever you have everybody has an imagination and the more you use it the more powerful it gets so um and i just want to thank everybody for sharing 
it's like when you go into the recycling bin and Joshua yeah. will say, you know, like if you're going to make these, these cards, just go and grab, you know, cardboard and just start with recycling papers and make these mm -hmm. like Pokemon cards, these animal cards mm -hmm. or these I am yeah. messages, but, and start to put mm -hmm. markers on them. It's when we, we think we have to go to the art store and we have to spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so that, all that perfectionism holds us back from stepping mm -hmm. into the, in the moment. So mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, we only have five minutes left. Could we go back to the mind mapping with the star? Yeah. And could you yeah. maybe just walk us through what you're inspired to take us through? Cause you've had a lot of ideas and we did a lot of brain dumping <laughs> with you right now, mm -hmm. but kind of take us and we won't interfere. We'll just watch what you, you do. And then we'll bring you back. Cause I, I am sure everybody would love to have you back. And, and I hope you're feeling really um, connected to our community already. So we would love to honor your, your spirit back with um, two more visits or, and more if you like. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, I think, um, so yeah, what, what, what I would, if I did a quick kind of, um, finish on these six points um so for example i put art and drawing down here painting uh i would be put um let's say movement here um imagination um I, i'm just starting with what what in what I love, what inspires me. Um, courage is another one. Um, I love nature courage. is another one. I love courage because courage sets you free, right? When you have the courage yeah. to, to do things, um, somebody who lives courageously does way more than somebody who is living in fear. Yeah. And health, let's put those down. So this one, I, I guess art would be, if I then branch off here, that's like creativity. Um, that's also observe, observation. That's also playing. And then um, movement, that's also playing. So we could have a, a link here um creativity nature uh that's um nourishing and even the movement that we just talked about with the butterfly could be the creative yeah. movement that that you were joshua was speaking to with the movement exercise and then with you with the observation the faces and then putting words to those faces and the observation yeah. and the smiles that Anne Marie talked about, right? So the mm. observing different smiles, one smile. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. So so we could put like portraits, and then from there, see see how these little bubbles are all linking to each other. Then out of portraits, you could put uh, smile, different smiles, um, And um, different smiles would go to, that would go to different emotions, uh, different feelings and emotions or expressions. And I also see the courage to, you know, go from into the cocoon, right? And then emerge as the butterfly, right? It takes yeah. a lot of courage to transform our nation yeah. to freedom. Um, yeah. And I love that, right? And then the imagination is yeah. once we do, where does this take us? And the imagination of playing off of one another, like group imagination. And can yeah. you, like, because we've sparked a lot of ideas working with each other, and our imagination just started to triple and magnify because we were all sharing. Yeah. And so that's, yeah. And then so from group community, that goes to growth. So this is, um, and then same like nature growth, there's a line from there to there. You see, there's like, you can see so many links between them and that's creativity that that's what seeing, that's what I was referring to before, you know, how you can see the links between things. Yeah. Um, 
and then yeah it's like the more you do this the more ideas will pop into your head and then you'll say okay where should I put that where does that link to and and that's how you build a mind map even the movement because so, we've got the movement of the mm, structure of the kindness card yeah. right so mm. the kindness card had a structure which gave us yeah. way more creativity and freedom so the yeah. movement of how we presented set us free which created mm. way more imagination for everybody as well so i love how we've taken mm -hmm. what we did today and we've turned it into a mind map and we've pulled from everybody's ideas and charlotte's mm listening and you know helping us synthesize this into mm -hmm. a mind map call that we did with the kindness kits mm. and that all started by thinking you know who who are who am i you know what lights you up um so but you you can do that for anything i think that that's it's a great uh, starting point to yeah to start with that question you know who who am i and, and then, then you know if we right back, if we bring it back charlotte to our health when we are doing this it improves our health because we're lit up mm -hmm. we're in communities that see and feel and appreciate us and so all these things help improve our health so that's the health mm -hmm. that you have over here as well yeah. so the more we feed and understand the i am and the truth of who we are and we work in yeah. collaboration it improves health as well so I think on that new note, um, Rebecca is saying, I have some more creative ideas now too. I'm excited to create more with this. Uh, if you guys all want to unmute, we'll just say goodbye and thank you to Charlotte. And um, so much fun. You guys can continue yeah. the mind mapping that Charlotte started. Maybe Charlotte, we can take a picture of it and I'll post it in the Facebook group and we can all start to play and expand off of it. With you. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you want me to? Do you want to take a, a screenshot of that or do you want me to take sure. a proper photo? Yeah, let's all do the peace sign, the V sign, and then um, we'll take a screenshot. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> There's the V's. Oh, one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, do one more time. One more time. One more time. Um. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Nice. Yay. Um, did we have fun, everybody? Did we love Charlotte? Was she an amazing guest speaker? Thanks, Charlotte, so much. You're a super Hi, girl. I just dropped my phone. <laughs> that were thank you. Yeah, that was a really fun hour and a half. I'm okay. really happy that I got invited. <laughs> Yay! Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks, guys. Send in love. Hey, everybody, unmute and give your thanks. Go ahead. Free, free. Free talk. Say hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. 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 Thank you.